going to read from the Word of the Lord. Praise God. First John. Amen. And, uh, we're going to read uh, the uh, first the chapter, the fifth verse. Read it aloud with me, if you will. It says there, This then is the message which we have heard of him and declared unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have no fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he faithfully and is just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for the word tonight. Praise God. Amen. And so tonight I want to talk to you a little bit about light. Everybody say light. And I believe that we uh, should understand the light of the Lord. We don't understand any other way. Uh, Thomas Edison, I believe, found a lot to do with the light we're looking at above us here tonight. And uh, that, that's been important to us all our life. But there's never been a light more important than what I'm talking to you about tonight. And that's the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we've heard several views in the Word of the Lord in 1 John talking about light, walking in the light, and, uh, and it kind of clarifies things for us. Uh, but we would like to open it up and just see what the Lord would have to say about it uh, in this lesson and message tonight. Amen. And so uh, thinking about light, as far as the Spirit goes and as far as God goes, uh, before a person can ever come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, the Bible says that that person is in total spiritual darkness. Everybody say total darkness. And uh, so before a person can come, has come to God and say in the knowledge of God, he's in darkness. And then when he comes to God, then light becomes a part of his life. Uh, when he comes to Jesus, the, that person is no longer in darkness once he comes to Jesus. But in following Christ, they have the light of life. How many has looked at or saw or experimented uh, and also enjoyed the light of life? Have you ever enjoyed the light of Jesus Christ in your life? Has he ever turned on a light in your soul? Has he given you a revelation of something and all of a sudden it was like a bright light come on and you just realized something that you hadn't realized uh, all your life? It just... Come on, that, that happened with me, you know, in receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It wasn't I hadn't heard about it or wasn't taught about it. It wasn't that I were, wasn't raised to know it and to believe it, but to experience it, you know, from a faith standpoint and to see it for yourself in your own mind and own heart. All of a sudden, the light of Jesus Christ turning on in your life. What a joy. Praise God. Amen. And so, as, as such as they are instructed to no longer walk in darkness, we find, but as children of light, to walk in the light, the light of Christ and His Word. In John the 18th chapter, 12th verse in part, I'd like to read this. It says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have light of life. And this is where we are tonight. We need light of life. You know, every now and then our candles get a little bit dim. And, you know, it seems like there's a little low flicker. And, you know, it seems like it, maybe it's given out of air or oxygen. Amen. And sometimes we just have to have a little more oxygen. Amen. Just a little more praise, a little more prayer. You know, just giving a little more thanks to the Lord. Amen. And then the light will begin to shine again in our life. Amen. So Christ tells us that He's the light here. He's the light of the world. And He said if we follow Him, we won't walk in darkness, but we will have light in our lives. And this is what we need tonight. We need all the light 
that God has for us in our life. Amen. I don't know about you, but I believe I know you enough, enough to know that you would like to have all the light that He has to offer. I want to know everything that He wants me to know and that I need to know, don't you? Amen. There's a lot of things that gets confusion, confusing to me. You know, as I go through life and as I begin to face uh, situations that I have never faced before, I begin to learn things that I have never learned or had knowledge of before. And so at that time, it's always a time when I'm searching for that light, you know, to give me some type of knowledge or wisdom or understanding or even a faith level to be able to get through that dark time in our life. And Jesus is waiting all the time to give us that light that we need in our life. He, he's here to light up our world every day when things seem to be dark and gloomy and dim. You know, He just wants to make a way for us when it seems like to us there is no way. Amen. But we know that through the light of Jesus Christ, there is a way. And we have enjoyed that to this day. And we're going to continue to enjoy it. Can you clap your hands to the Lord? Praise God. Amen. And so, uh, we walking in light is, is conditioned on following Christ. Um, sometimes we lose our way. Sometimes we stumble on the path. Uh, sometimes we're confused uh, with things that are going on in and around us. Amen. But when we begin to follow Christ closer, just get a little closer to Him. Listen closely for His footsteps. See if you can move up just a little bit closer. And before long, you'll begin to feel, you know, His presence and begin to see the light that you need to get you through that situation in life. And so in order to walk in the light, we must see our sins as God sees them. So, time, so many times we have a problem with seeing our mistakes, and seeing our failures, and uh, seeing, you know, seeing in our own lives. It's always really easy for us to see that in others' lives, but for to see it in our life and understand it, you know, as far as we're concerned. But in order to walk in the light of Jesus, we must see our sins as Jesus sees our sins. And we must ask Him for the ability to see and understand our failures and our mistakes and how we can overcome our problems. I remember several years ago after receiving uh, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I remember uh, going to an altar. I'd been... I'd been going to prayer room, you know, and I uh, had a lot of people that I had got to know in church. And I went out to eat with all of them. You know, I went to their houses. We have cooked out together, and we fellowship. You know, and uh, they were just great folks. I loved God, but, you know, every now and then I'd notice a little shortcoming here and there or something because me being a young Christian, you know, I hadn't learned that I was going to find some things wrong with myself yet. You know, I hadn't really got it all together yet myself and I begin to look around and I begin to realize you know everybody's not perfect you know but I didn't realize yet that I'm not perfect you know and it wasn't long before the Lord was able to reveal to me that when I'm looking you know in the other direction I'm not looking in this direction and so we all need a spiritual mirror for the Lord to be able to show us you know where we really are and we all need his light how many thanks God for the light of Jesus Christ tonight? Somebody say amen. Amen. So, so we must uh, recognize what sin is. Uh, we realize in the 8th through the 10th verse there of 1 John 1, it says, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He's faithful. And He's just to forgive our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar, and His Word is not in us. And so it's really clear how the book begins to open things to us there. There's so many angles that the enemy can confuse us, so many ways he can twist our thoughts and our minds to make us misunderstand exactly what, what believing and what the light is to us and, and how to be able to confirm the light in our lives and be able to see if we are walking in light and if He is our light. Amen. And, and realize that He is able to give us light in that time of confusion. Can somebody say amen? 
And so we must recognize what sin is. And I tell you the truth, I, I, I have found many times that, that I could be short of living for God and not even realize it. Is anybody here that ever just realized later, you know, you, uh, one man said, I, I'm sincere, you know, and uh, I'm just as sincere as I can be. You know, I believe in this. I'm, I'm serious about this. But I found out uh, sometimes many years ago that you can be just as sincere as sincere can be. And you can be sincerely wrong. And it, it is something, you know, how things are that you're so confused that sometimes you can't, my dad used to say, you can't see off the end of your nose. He says, son, you can't see for looking. And so often it's kind of like that with Christians, you know. We, you know, we're looking, but we're not looking in all the right places. And so tonight, you know, walking in light is so important to us. And I would like to just, if I could do anything tonight, is just, you know, shed some light on walking in light. Shed some light on real light. Amen. Shed some light, you know, on Jesus' vision of you and I and how he sees us in this world. And so uh, sometimes our sense of sin is in, in proportion to our nearness to God. And so if we're not close to God, our sense to sin may not really be very, very good. You know, and our knowledge and, and sensitivity that sin's on board or sin's close. You know, so we, we must move closer to Jesus. We must get a better walk with Him. We must get a, a better understanding of His Word. We, we, are, we should be able to, to find out exactly how He feels about situations. Anytime we're making decisions, we should find out, you know, what we believe that Jesus would do in search of cir- such a circumstance that we're going through. I'm talking about the light. Everybody say the light of Jesus Christ. So important. Can you clap your hands to the Lord? Amen, amen, amen. So it's when he sees himself, everybody say, when I see myself as a sinner in need of Jesus as a Savior. You know, when we see that and then we begin to repent, everybody say, repent of our sins. And then we believe and receive the forgiveness of that only He can give us for sin. And we become born again of water in the name of Jesus. And by the spiritual baptism of the Holy Ghost, we begin to rejoice in the new birth. Somebody say, that's light. That's light. And in that, there is no darkness. And so often we have to go back to our first works. You know, to make sure that we renew in those areas so that we can really continue to make the decisions that we made that one time that we made it to an altar of repentance and begin to turn ourselves over to Jesus Christ. You know, so often we have to keep going back, going back to the cross, going back to Calvary, go back to where we started from and begin to see the need to move from there forward again. So often we need to backtrack and see where we got off track. Amen. Maybe follow ourselves back till we find where we stumbled and where we fell. And say, God, let me remember your cross. Let me remember where you, where you found me at, where you, renew, where you feel me at, Lord, where you gave me strength to overcome at. God, I thank you for loving me, and I thank you, Lord, for being concerned about me, Lord. I know that if you took care of me back then, God, that you can take care of me right now. I know that you got a way to help me through this right now. I know you love me, Lord. I know you love me, Lord, because if you didn't love me, there is no way I'd ever got that chance I got all those years ago. So, Lord, I know you love me now. And I believe your light's here for me just like it was for then. And I've come to praise you for light tonight, God. I have came to give you glory and give you praise for light. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, praise God. I want to just give you a thought here. Uh, Sometimes we don't want to think of the actions of our mistakes, you know, and uh, sometimes as believers we, we've received, you know, the uh, forgiveness of Christ, the cleansing of Christ, but we go through our daily lives and, uh, and we soil our garments. We kind of, you know, get dirty again. Anybody ever got dirty again? You know, we just kind of get, 
you know, a little dirt on our garments. You know, we, we, we kind of make a, a few mistakes, you know, along the way. Amen. And so uh, far too many times uh, Christians don't see that sin as evil. Now, I'm, I'm giving you a point now. I want you to think about it. You know, we, we believe in grace, and we're thankful for the grace of God. Grace, grace is, is one of the best things that I ever found out about, His grace. But sometimes we fail to realize, you know, that when we sin, we still have sin. We still have sin. We have a graceful God, a grace-filled God. You know, that will forgive us and cleanse us and help us over, overcome. But so often we don't see our sin as sin. There's a need for us to understand that sin is sin. And when we sin, we got to recognize it's not just something that humanity is. It's just not a part of life. It's, a, it's not a part of what God would have in our lives. Everybody say, buddy, it is sin. Amen. And so we realize that we don't want to think about it that way. And, uh, you know, we don't, I mean, that we uh, have actions that uh, brings us into a sinful place. But so many times Christians don't see their sin as evil. That is, they don't believe that their sin is nothing more than just a mistake. They don't really believe their sin is no, nothing more but their own frailty and their own weaknesses or their errors. Or just being human. I, I'm, Lord, I'm only human, you know. And so often we belittle and make sin so small that we don't realize how terrible and how damaging and how great it is to battle our victories and to bring us to a lower place and to rob our faith from us, to take away our belief in God and His ability to save us, His ability to wash us clean. His ability to help us overcome and His ability to give us strength to say no to sin. I can remember teaching this this way many times, you know, that, uh, you know, whenever we uh, really are not considering our sin to be as bad as it is for us, that we have to finally realize that we got to go back to where we began at and say, God, Help me not to sin. Somebody say the Holy Ghost is for strength to say no. Everybody say repentance and baptism in the name of Jesus is for forgiveness of past sins and for remissions of those sins. But the Holy Ghost is to give us power to say no to sin today and tomorrow. And so we need to put more emphasis on the power of the Holy Ghost, the power to say no, the power to turn away, and the power to be strong in God's Spirit, and strong in His power, and strong in living for God, and strong in saying no to those things that are telling us that everything's all right. Somebody say, I don't want sin. But I want to live for God. If you did, if you want to live for God, would you give God a hand tonight and thank Him for that? Praise God. I want to see sin, Amen, as sin. I want to see sin as evil. I want to, I want to see sin, you know, not as just an error or a mistake I made, or just me being human. I want to see sin as sin, and I want to see it in time before I fall and before I mess up. Amen. And, I, and that's not to say we won't ever mess up, but it is to say that we're not excusing ourselves for any sin whatsoever, but we're getting a handle on our prayer and our walk with God so that we won't, you know, have to make some small excuse for something that will take us to some great failure because the Lord Jesus Christ has brought life to you and I tonight. His life is here in this place tonight. His life is sitting right beside you. Why don't somebody pat the seat right beside you and say, you can sit right here, Father. Come on, let's ask the Holy Ghost. Just just have a seat right here by me. Amen. I need you, Lord. I need you to be close to me. I need to be able to see and reveal. I need you to reveal to me that light that you revealed to me so many years ago. 
Lord, that I might see where I'm failing at and where I may be going wrong at. In Jesus' name, praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody say confessing sin. Confessing sin includes two actions. And I'm going to say this, these two actions tonight. Is uh, saying, everybody say saying and doing. That's the only two actions that it requires to confess sin. Saying and doing. It is saying the same thing about our sins, and it includes a forsaking of our sin. In other words, I say the same thing about my sin as Jesus says, and I'm forsaking my sin. Somebody want to forsake sin tonight, and anything that may be damaging your walk with God, something that may be causing you to fail and causing you to give up and causing you to have doubt and causing you, you know, to, to not be able to get a handle on prayer in life. Amen. But God is right here, sitting right side of you, pat the seat on beside you. He's right there with you. Amen. He's there. Amen. Always. Amen. Right there for the believer who has wandered possibly away from him. No matter how deep in the fear in the, in, and or are deep and how far in the, in the country of, of, the sin, of the sin that we've wandered, there is always a path that leads back to the Father's house. No matter how far we get off from the Lord, there's always a way back. And it's amazing to me, and really it's not a, amazing in a, in a good way, but what I'm saying is it's really uh, confusing to me. It's confusing how that, that I can begin to get off track and how that, you know, I can get to the place in my life to where I believe somehow that I cannot find my way back. It's, it's the devil's tool to try to tell us, you know, you know, God don't want anything to do with you anymore. You know, look at how bad you've been and look how far you've gone. And, you know, what would God want to do with somebody like you? And so often the devil gets us to listen to him in states like that. And then before we know it, you know, we have listened too much. And, our, you, know, there, you know, we realize that we've hardened ourselves and we have become a hardened sinner again. But Christ receives hardened sinners. Look at your neighbor and say, God receives hardened sinners. God looks back at where we've been and he, he, he loves us anyway. And, uh, and he, he likes to go out and meet, meet a hardened sinner, you know. He, may, he likes to go out and put his arms around his neck and hug, hug that sinner and kiss that sinner and put a ring on that sinner's finger. He loves that. That's what the Lord wants to do for all of us. Can you say amen? When we get off track and begin to wander away from him. He delights in remaking people that are like that and redeeming them. Somebody say, thank God for your redeeming power. Amen. 1 John 1 and 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. In verse uh, 1 of chapter, uh, chapter 2, it says, my little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if, you, if any man sin." We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Somebody say, I thank you, Lord, for righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Do you thank Him tonight? Do you glorify Him tonight? Do you praise Him tonight? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. And so we're walking tonight. We're walking down a path of life. Sometimes we have bright light and sometimes we have dim light. But if Jesus is anywhere near, you have light. Can you say amen? And so to walk in the light is to be obedient to God's instructions. Just as Christ lived a life of perfection, a life of absolute obedience to the Father. When we have that light, we can skip every stone that would stumble us. We can step over every chasm that might would cause us to trip and, you know, would be able to be able to see well enough to, to go around anything that might would cause us to fall or, or stumble again. 
but we would be able to move forward in Jesus Christ. Aren't you thankful that he made light for you? Aren't you thankful that he uh, created a world around us and separated light from darkness and, and right now we have light because of that? Did you know you can take Satan you know, that torments you into the light of Jesus Christ and he won't hang around, but he'll find him a way out and he'll find him a way to run. Amen. He'll find him, him a way to get himself behind thee. Amen. As you begin to resist him and begin to show him the light of Jesus Christ. Amen. How many want to turn on the light? Amen. On Satan tonight. Let him know that Jesus is the light and he is your light tonight. Praise God. Amen. In the second chapter, the third verse, it says, And hereby we do know that we know him if we, somebody say if we, keep his commandments. I don't want you to raise your hand right now, but I want you to consider the commandments of the Lord. I believe that we should still keep the commandments. Does anybody believe that? I believe we should keep the commandments. Amen. And so this word is telling us that if we keep his commandments, he that saith, I know him, and keeps not his commandments, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But whoso keeps his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby, no. Some I say, no, we that we are in him. And he that saith he abides in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. Somebody say, as Jesus Christ. Does anybody believe this tonight? Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. The fifth chapter of John, the 30th verse, it says, I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. My judgment is just because I seek not mine own will but the will of the Father which has sent me. Could we just close our eyes right now and think about that verse and think about the words of Jesus? Amen. I'm going to read it again as we're thinking. Just give thought to it. I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just. Because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father, which hath sent me. I want to seek His will, don't you? Let's think about it just for a moment, please. I'd like for you to consider, you know yourself, personal things. You know, not something that I would know about. Not something that your friend next to you would know about. But consider that verse of Scripture and apply it to yourself right now and the thoughts that you have and the memories you have and the things you face this week. Maybe things that happen Monday or Tuesday. You remember them well. We all remember them. Maybe even tonight. Maybe on the way to church. Maybe this week. The way we treated somebody or the way we, you know, felt about somebody and, you know, some thoughts we had that wasn't really like they should have been. You know, that is not the light of Christ and we have to be careful when those kind of things start happening because if we're not careful, there's another shadow that might be cast in our direction that would overshadow the light if we allow it to. Can you say amen? In Psalms 15, it says in verse 1, Lord... Who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. Where is your heart tonight? Is your heart seeking after truth? Is your heart seeking after God? Amos wrote it this way. He said, can two walk together unless they are agreed? Have you ever tried to walk with somebody and you were stumbling all over their feet and they were stumbling all over your feet? You know, have you ever tried to follow anybody and they stop right in front of you and you trip over them? You know, 
You know, me and Gail can't walk to, walk together half the time. You know, it's, she's got such short steps, and I got such long steps. You know, it. You know, somehow we got to do something to compensate. You know, for the way we, the way we're stepping to be able to walk together. That, that's the way it is with walking with the Lord. We have to we have to find a way to compensate our steps. You know, a way to be more in line with His steps, so that we can walk with Him. Because you know, it's saying here that. That uh, that we can walk together, Amen. But we gotta know. Somebody say no, and we gotta understand the other's way of walking, and the other's way of working, and the other's way of righteousness, and the other's voice of truth, and the other's heart when it comes to God, Amen. In 1 John 5, it says in the third verse, it says, For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments. Everybody say, keep His commandments. And His commandments are not grievous. If you keep the commandments of the Lord, you're not going to feel all bad because you did that. You know, if you keep the commandments of the Lord, you're not going to feel like, Oh man, I missed out on this and I missed out on this. That's not how you're going to feel. Because when you keep the commandments of God, you're going to be so happy that you were able to keep His commandments, and you're going to be so thankful for your, your being able to do that. Did you know that every time that you remember to pray in a day, how many has ever forgot to pray? How many has ever went, went all day long and just forget, just admit, admit it, and you just forgot to pray that day? Amen. And how many of you would do this? You can admit this. You know, how many of you remembered to pray and you were thankful that you remembered? Have you been that way? And so every time you pray, you'll be thankful and you'll feel good about your prayer. Every time you repent of your sins or every time you reject, you know, a sin that has come at you, You'll feel so wonderful about that decision to say no to sin. And that decision, I have that word of prayer. And you'll begin to be stronger and stronger. And the light will begin to shine brighter and brighter. Amen. It's so wonderful uh, and so simple. All at the same time to walk in the light of Jesus Christ. Can somebody clap your hands unto the Lord? Amen. In John, 1 John 2, 9, it says, He that saith he is in the light and hates his brother. Listen carefully. Somebody say, hates his brother. He is in darkness, even until now. He that loves his brother abides in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hates his brother is in darkness, and walks in darkness and knows not whether he goes because the darkness hath blinded his eyes. That's a powerful verse, isn't it? It's amazing how much and how often that we want to excuse ourselves not to love our brother. It's it's amazing to me how that we could Find some justification not to love one another. It's it's a terrible thing for us to do that, knowing what the Word of God is saying here. A proof of our love for God can be seen in how we treat each other. The Bible says that we should do unto others as we would have them do unto us. And we should consider that statement of the Word before we ever made a decision against another individual. Everybody say, do unto others as we would have them do unto us. Think about that just for a moment. Amen. And think about it for sure before you make a judgment or decision, you know, about or for someone else. Amen. But ask God to give you the power and ability to do in them. You want to feel good tomorrow? You may tell you how to feel good tomorrow. Tomorrow when somebody mistreats you, do to them what you would have them do to you. And you'll walk away from that scene 
And I promise you, you'll feel real good. But if you do to that person what you would do to them and not what you would want them to do to you, then guess what you're going to feel like? You're going to walk away from there and you're going to feel like, you know, that is so terrible. I feel so bad about that. I wish I'd have handled that so differently. It's amazing how we don't even have to be preached to the Word. We can live we can live this message at home and the Word will come right back to us and it will remind us that right after we've made that mistake. And it will remind us how to do things right and how to correct things. It's a sad thing when a person that has known light all their life will not walk in light. It's a sad thing whenever we can justify our little sins and think that we're all right. But it's a wonderful thing when we allow the light of Jesus Christ to have power and control in our lives. Somebody say, I can do this. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, I can do this. Somebody say, if I can do this, anybody can do this. How many can do this? Can you clap your hand to the Lord? Praise God. Praise God. Love for a fellow believer. Look at your neighbor and say, I love you. Love for a fellow believer will manifest the difference between God's children and the devil's children. Boy, it got quiet. Put it with me. Put this with me. Amen. Listen. Love for fellow believers, look at David and say, I'm talking about you. My love for you. Tell them, my love for you. Love for you that I have manifests the difference between God's children and the devil's children. Now, how do you love that person right next to you? Somebody say, Great revelation. If you want a revelation, you get one. Can you say amen? If you want light on your pathway, God will give it to you. Can you say amen? Amen. God is bringing light to us in a very simple way and simple term tonight. Amen. And I believe he's, you know, offering help to us in time of need, in time of trouble. Can you say amen? 1 John 3 and 10 says, In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness, is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Did I read that right? Did I read that right? Look at your neighbor and say, he read that light right. I'm going to read it one more time because I'm not sure I read it right. Is it if I do it again? In this the children of God are manifest. Somebody say, this is how we find out who the children of God are. And the children of the devil are manifest. This is how we find out who's of the devil. Listen to this. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. Do you love your neighbor as yourself? Do you love your brother that's behind you, in front of you, and beside you? Do you? Because it's important according to God's Word. Can you say amen? So we should love our brothers and our sisters so much that we, can, we just can't wait until we can get together again on the Lord's Day. Oh, I can't wait this Sunday to get together with you folks, and I can't wait to be together with you in fellowship the next time. Come on, that's how people that love one another are. Amen. When I was a child, and I still am about the same way, my wife, you know, you know, kind of gets a little bit different in her feelings because she's got to do all the cleaning and all the wipe up and all the, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And, you know, but, you know, I just love company. Does anybody love company? Anybody? Amen. And I know somebody, some people don't love company. Now, my wife don't like a bunch of company because she, she's afraid that she's got to cook. And, you know, and if she cooks, she's afraid she's going to mess up. And she's one of the best cooks in the world. 
and she's afraid she's going to mess up. And she just don't like that kind of pressure on her. So I'm not saying anything about her, but we're using that as a comparison, you see. Amen. If you love your brother, you want to hang out with him. You want to spend time with him. You want to have fellowship with him. You just can't wait to get together with him. If you hunt together, you want to go hunting. If you watch ball games together, you want to go to Brent's house. Somebody say, I want to love everybody. Amen. I want to love my brother. I want to love my sister. Amen. And I want to treat those nice that despitefully use me. And I want to be kind. And I want to do unto others as I'd have them do unto me. Could we just ask the Lord right now to help us with that? Because that's a need that we all have tonight. Is we need the ability to do unto others. So often it's hard to do whenever, you know, at the very time that you're needing to do this, you know, they may not be doing to you like you would do to what would want them to. That's such a hard thing, but it should be that we work on that and allow this light to come to us tonight and allow God to give us strength to do unto others as we'd have them do unto us. Is this all right, everybody? Is this all right? We getting anything out of this? Amen. In 1 John 4, 7 through 12, he said, but let, but let us love one another. Look at your neighbor and say, I love you. Let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. He that loves not knows not God. For God is love. And in this was manifest the love of God toward us. Because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. Herein is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the the perpetuation for our sins. Beloved, if God is God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Look at your neighbor and say, I want to love you. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us and is his love is perfected. Everybody say in us. You haven't seen him, but when you begin to love one another, you know, his love is being seen and felt and experienced within you and also without. Can you say amen? So, uh, there's a country called Albania. Anybody know about where that is on, on the globe? Europe. In Albania. And I'll tell you a little bit about it. I, I wrote this down and I read it today. It says, I am told that in Albania, hospitality is evidently very common it's a part of their culture. It's, a, it's, it's something they love to do. And it seems that from the fact that before communism, communism took over there, most Al- Albanians were Muslims. And as a guest would come to their house, even if he was a total stranger, he would be offered some tobacco to smoke. And he'd be given a seat next to the hearth, the fireplace. And he would be given a place of honor. And if he was traveled far, the woman of the house would wash his feet. He is served coffee after that and invited to the table to eat. Every house is supposed to keep special food ready in case there is a guest that will attend. And, you know, I can remember when it was more like that. You know, today I don't dare go to one of your houses without calling you before I come. And, you know, a lot of people won't give us their address back there and their phone number because they're afraid we're going to come visit them. You know? you know? 
you know, maybe we got a few out here that just could take guests any time, but by the majority, the world just don't want any, you know, you know, surprise visits, right? It's just not a world like that. Amen. But this group of people, amen, is like I just described. But I remember when I was a little boy, how that I loved for company to come and how that I didn't care if I gave up my bed. I'd sleep on the floor anywhere just to get company to come, Brother Mark. Just so company would come. My girls didn't want to give up their bed for nobody. They didn't want to get on no couch or no floor. It's just different. Can you say amen? It's different. Amen. But company, you know, back in my childhood was important enough that they were probably a little bit left over. And mom could probably throw together a little food. You know, how many of y'all can remember when your mother could put together a little food for some guests if they come in? Does anybody here know what I'm talking about? Amen. They could always just get together a little something and invite them. You know, because hospitality in that day was a whole lot more important than it is today. Can you say amen? And so we need to realize that love is a commandment. It's not an option. Everybody say that with me. Love is a commandment. And we already said we're supposed to live by the commandments. It's not an option. It's a commandment. First John 4, it says there in the 20th verse, If a man say, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he that loves not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God, whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loves God love his brother also. That's the commandment of the Lord. Is that all right? I want to tell you a little story, and uh, we're getting close to the end here tonight. But, uh, you know, a profession of loving God that is not accompanied by a love for God's people is not a true confession of love. It's not consistent. It's not true. We must consider that. Have you ever been confronted with a message that changed your perspective on life? Has anybody ever had something told them that just turned on a light to you and it made you uh, look at things a lot different. This is something I might even suggest we do. Maybe uh, we could get somebody that would like this idea good enough that we would implement it here in this church. But in this, uh, there was a congregation of people uh, who chose a theme uh, and they called it 40 Days of Love. Everybody say 40 Days of Love. Now, this is not this is not associated with the 40 days of love that we know of in a book and all of that. This is not talking about that. But they had a theme in this church called 40 days of love. And so they had something that they would do in that church for so long uh, until that 40 days was gone. But each week, the first thing that they gave, you know, after they gave that theme, each week, uh, the members of that congregation were engaged, encouraged to show their love and appreciation in different ways to somebody in their in the congregation. Are, are we getting that? Are we getting it? Just find a way, you know, uh, to show Brother Phil you love him this week. Find a way to uh, to let Brother Jack know you love him this week. Let, you know, find a way, you know, you know, somehow, you know, to let you know Brother Brent, Brother Mark. Make sure you find a way to let me know you love me. I like, I like to know people love me. Does anybody here like to know people love you? Can you say amen? Amen, that's great, isn't it? Amen, it's great to know your love. Come on, somebody say it's great to know your love. I'm going to tell you all, most of you know him, so I'm going to tell you a story about Brother Juan, Andy Juan. He said, I'd rather be celebrated than tolerated any day. So it's kind of nice to be celebrated. Amen. And so if we would celebrate one another, you know, some way this week, find some way to celebrate each other and to show our love to somebody. 
Amen. And so this was what they were doing. So the first week, they encouraged, you know, everybody to send a note to somebody and begin to tell them, you know, how much they cared about them and give them some positive contribution in that note. And after the first service, a man came in the congregation and wanted to speak with the pastor at that first service. They had that meeting and that, that was passed around. And the pastor described this man as a, you know, he was kind of macho and he was a former football player. You know, and uh, he loved to hunt and fish, and he was str- a strong, self-made man. Now, you know kind of man I'm describing right now. And so this man came to the pastor, and he, he looked at the pastor, he said, I love you, and, and I love this church, but, but I'm not going to participate in this 40-day love stuff. It's, a, it's okay for some folks, he said. He said, but it's a little too sentimental and, and syrupy for me. So I don't want to do this, pastor. Amen. And so a week went by, and you know, and you know, everybody did that, I guess, you know, uh, because the rest of the story is kind of looking a little better here. So the next Sunday, this man waited after church to see his pastor again, and and uh, so when he did, he he went to his pastor. He said, Pastor, I want to apologize for what I said last Sunday. He told him about the forty days of love, and you know, and. Uh, I realized on Wednesday of this week that I was wrong, Pastor, and I just want to apologize for what I said about that. And uh, Pastor said, Wednesday? His Pastor said, Wednesday? He said, what happened on Wednesday? He said, I got one of those letters. And the man said, and the letter came as a total surprise. And it was from a person the man never expected to hear from. I would have never thought he'd have wrote me a letter. And it touched him so deeply, he now carries it around in his pocket all the time. And every time I read it, he said, I get tears in my eyes. And it was a transforming moment in this man's life. And suddenly he realized he was loved by others in the church. And this changed his entire outlook on church and on people and on the people, his brothers and sisters in the church. He said, I was so moved by that letter. He said, I went and wrote 10 letters myself. Somebody say, love, shine. Can we stand? Somebody say, love, shine on me. Can you just close your eyes and lift your hands to the Lord and ask the Lord to let let his light shine? Let his light shine on you and on your life and on your heart and on your relationships tonight. Can you ask the Lord to help you to uncover these things before they happen in your life so that you can say no to sin and so you can have the light that surrounds you to be able to keep from stumbling and falling and give you the light that you need that you can love your neighbor as yourself and that you can do unto others as you'd have them do unto you that you can feel so good about yourself instead of so bad about yourself because you allow darkness to control your life. If you love the Lord, just lift your hands to Him and love Him tonight as I turn this over to this praise group. And this, If you'd like to pray, you can pray, but I'm, I'm through right now. I just want the Lord to have His way.